towels really up in the face. I, mean, right? I know. That's why I so, I behave myself. Can't pick uh, my nose. Patrick is in Florida as well as Amelia, two different parts. And so oh, just asked me nice. to uh, chair and, and, and work through this. And so we've got a, a pretty, I think, what is a brief agenda tonight with yeah. most of our stuff that are turning the work over to the UTL. And so um, it's a, um, Bill and Karen. Um, but it was. Seven oh two for the agenda. Um, so, did everybody get a chance to review the minutes that was sent from the February twenty ninth meeting? Yes. Yes. Motion to accept. So move. Yeah. Any discussion? Bill's going and shaking heads. No. All in favor. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, all right, so here, let's get right into the presentation. Uh, we'll turn everything over. If you didn't hear, uh, Brett, I, sorry, Brett, I had the volume down on our end. Keith has a stomach bug and um, called me earlier and let me know that. So uh, Brett is man in the ship. So all you, Brett, thank you. All right, good evening, everybody. Happy to be here with you on this uh, chilly beginning of spring here. Um, like Todd, Todd said, we're going to try to keep it uh, brief. I want to give uh, the committee two opportunities to have a discussion. The first one, talking about the site scoring. Since I know you all did that a little bit in isolation, um, we've leveled the scores, uh, identified the rankings, which I think is appropriate for the first day of March Madness, um, and want to give you all a, a chance to discuss that. And then the second thing will be more, more brief, we want to talk about the open house that's coming up in April and uh, kind of our conception around that and give everybody a chance to articulate what they hope to get out of it and if you have any input on it. So with that, I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, here we are on our timeline. A um, little about halfway uh, through our task number two, which is gathering community input on the programming and the site. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And what we're looking for tonight, we'll go through the site scoring, like I said, and then uh, look forward to our April 24th uh, in-person open house. And Todd, when we get to that, I'll let you give a little more details on, on the specifics of it. But cool. let, just to kind of review what we uh, looked at last meeting, so we reviewed the building program. Uh, this is something we've been developing for a number of months with all of you now. We looked at a couple of test fit uh, prototypes, one one-story building, one is a two-story building. So this is the two-story building that we're showing here. Uh, we talked a little bit about parking, and that's going to require you know, some more work on our part in coordination with Todd and some of the other uh, staff members in town to understand really uh, what we're going to need in terms of the parking. But as a kind of straight, straight away look at it, it's quite significant for a building of this size. And then we reviewed the site evaluation matrix, and we actually made some tweaks to it based on our conversation last time, and we sent it all out to all of you, and you did your scoring. And so where we landed once we collated all of the scores was it's pretty close, uh, neck and neck between Memorial Field and Ice Rink, uh, the Ice Rink site, um, as being the kind of two primary sites. And then trailing a little bit behind that was Black Point Park. So just to kind of give everybody a, a refresher on this, and then I'm going to, I'll stop talking for a few minutes and let you all discuss. But here's Memorial Field. We talked last time about uh, the skate park, the adjacency to the pickleball courts and the bathrooms that are out there. Um, just off of the screen, there's an outdoor amphitheater there as well. It's a fairly ample site at 156,000 square feet. It's also pretty well located. It does not have a lot of convenient nearby parking, uh, but there is a lot of parking within the kind of um, civic center and school uh, complex here. We did a very preliminary diagram to understand maybe where the building might go versus where parking could go, thinking about some important aspects of the site. So we do have 29 existing parking spaces uh, here, they kind of service those courts as well as that outdoor um, pergola and amphitheater. Uh, we do think that along Durant Drive that there is a good opportunity for additional parking all along that edge. 
uh, we, we've started a very preliminary layout. If we just did a kind of very simple parking layout like you have over here, uh, that it would be about 68 parking spaces. So it's it's low compared to what uh, the baseline zoning might require or planning guidelines. Um, and then the building could potentially be sited looking out onto the oval, which is a really great space. We know that there are a number of memorial trees here. The building itself would steer clear of those. Um, and it would sit primarily on the fields that are in that space now. We also talked about last time that there's potentially an area for a second entrance at the second floor because there is a lot of grade change here and the skate park is kind of up the hill, which is about midway between um, the fields here and the public safety building, which is closer to the top of the hill. So then... So uh, Brett, can I just uh, educate everybody on one conversation I did have regarding parking? Uh, it was asked of me to chat with um, Autumn, our town planner, mm -hmm. and so I had a, uh, asked her about the parking recommendations. And obviously, everybody goes to the planning board; they get mm -hmm. the recommendation. Um, and I, I, my my question was kind of loose enough to frame up decisions down the road, but it was, um, you know, these two sites on campus. Um, you know, if we have adequate parking on site, which it looks like we do inside this grid, um, potentially. You know how much of the adjacent parking and how far does it function as contiguous as far as feeling like it's connected um and in her mind and, I, and i'm not quoting her exactly but the uh, ice skating rink site has more contiguous parking that would feel like it's a loop parking right. lot versus you know we had 150 stalls for daytime use but yet you had 600 plus around for major events versus here the high school senior lot it's oh, right. farther and uphill so it's it's a tougher one to fit into that kind of scope so that's just nothing was a definite yes or no but that was kind of the conversation when we're talking about um convenient and contiguous parking so sorry about that brett no thanks thanks Todd. thanks for the background that's helpful so uh, this in all right. essence, i'm sorry i have a quick question so yeah. this in essence because i didn't get a chance to really look at this and I apologize. I missed the meeting last week. So this is the upper part of Memorial Park, so to speak. This is the Memorial Park. Field. Field. Yeah. This is well, Memorial I call it the upper park part of Memorial Park. Right. <laughs> Memorial park. It is. Yeah. Okay. Everything outside of the walking part up from up the hill from the green. So that's the, the bathroom building. No, no, I know. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm now I'm because yeah. I first looked at it and I went, oh no, we're not gonna no. Anyway, so my question on this is just so there's no memorials per se here or anything all right yeah. that's okay yeah that, and, and just for uh, education of everybody in your diagram the skate park or whatever it ends up being is not needed in as far as the square footage per se right that's right okay just for my own because we have some projects coming down the pike in the next you know potential this budget next so i don't want to do something and redo it so all right thank you huh absolutely right. that changes my mind on thing anyway all right, so let's look at the um, ice skating rink um, site here as well. And uh, some of the aerial images that you're going to see a little bit out of date, they don't have the field that was cut into the trees, uh, but we're mm -hmm. trying to use this background here to for a little bit better information. Um, this site is also pretty amply uh, sized. It's a little bit of a funny shape in terms of mm -hmm. trying to think about parking and buildings on that site. It is, like Todd said, it's closer to existing parking. So when we start to think about the times of day that the community center might be used and when it's going to be very busy, that might not always align with the times of day when the school parking lot is full, You know, especially if we're thinking mm -hmm. about weekend use or after school use. And as we've also talked about throughout um, all of our meetings that having a walking distance location from the schools to a new community center could be incredibly important for everybody and, and just uh, the general usefulness of the community center. So we did take a, a very quick look. This site has a good portion of wetland plus the buffer mm -hmm. uh, associated with it. So we have to be careful to steer clear of all of that. Uh, but our initial thought is that the, the uh, parking could be kind of located along Municipal Drive here. We wanna make sure that it's convenient for everybody to get to uh, and the building could be set back a little bit. We'd want to make sure that there is some kind of vegetated or tree buffer between the edge of the property and the houses next door. We want to make sure that that's a 
a comfortable edge there and that nobody's feeling overshadowed by a community center. Um, we also think that, you know, there is a potential to maintain the ice rink here, although I know it's it's the last couple of winters, it feels like we can't get a whole lot of ice out there, uh, yeah, but yeah. Oh, I who know. knows what's going to happen in the future there. Uh, but we do see that as, an, as a pretty nice amenity and a great adjacency to the community center if that use continues. And what we're looking for. Brett, uh, Brett uh, Todd, um, in terms of, so this wetland delineation map here looks like, I mean, that some of that's already developed into a field at this point, like the field kind of cuts into that a little bit. So has that conversion already, has that adjusted that wetland? And then can you, if we are going to, like that, the ice arena space, could that be turned into like replacement wetland? If we were to carve yeah. out a little bit of that of that blue window <clears throat> to allow for that building, yeah, the, the challenge with replacing wetland is that the ratio is not equal. Mm. You know what I mean? If you take in, you know, making it a lot of whatever the site is, you take an acre, you got to I think you got to give back twelve. And oh, okay, so, and I'm sorry, yeah, the ahead. I think now I could be wrong, but the town has used up all its ability to mitigate wetland. From we, what I understand, yeah, which I was, really irritates me. I was told that they're saying to towns. Well, yeah, I was told when I met with the town engineer a couple of weeks ago about this when we started doing yeah. this is that if we were to mitigate any or, or look for the opportunity to mitigate yeah. anything, we would have to get it vetted first. And her understanding of it, if I recall correctly, is that in past products we've been able to do things in lieu of funds. Right. We are at that threshold now where we wouldn't be able to do it in lieu of funds. It would have to be the the, the conversion of I think it's one to twelve. So you have to if you take one, you've got to give twelve. So, but it doesn't have to be necessarily at that. Side. It could be anywhere. Right. Yeah. It could be. But you can conserve land somewhere else. And exactly. But you're right. Oh, but that's good to know. But I thought we couldn't even do that. Yeah. Because then you could possibly take some of that back, but then mitigate something somewhere else. Exactly. That ice arena is the perfect spot to just have a natural wetland built into the space. Right. Like storm water retention, right. retention area right. for that right. whole space. I mean, already built for that. Right. Basically. And so that may be able to be yeah. used when you like to when I was trying to just squeeze up on Brett's. You know that field in the, in the second slide. The, the field's not there as well as we use the ice rink when we drive all yeah. over it. You know what I mean? So right. it's like well, that whole area. So you can see that where the ice rink are, right? Like where B. Right. I don't have good mind. That that is actually the soccer field. Correct. So yeah, yeah. it might be a setback from the wetland, but it isn't wet now. Well, it, well, <laughs> it's a yeah. field. It, it's yeah, a you play on it all day long. Would you yeah. look? Well, that's different than any of the Oh, this is line. right here's where our our, our <laughs> school of town garage is sitting right here because there's the path of the entrance. Yeah. It's right here. It's a big and, browser, yeah. And so this all here is gone. It's gone. It's all right. field. Right. And it comes, this fence line comes here. And that, that field really comes all the way down into here. Right. right. Exactly. So yeah. it's it's a little it's, deceiving. It's a little deceiving. Um it depends but, on what you are. But you have that area rule. if you need it for wet that area to say, okay, you know, like you said, the stormwater stuff. It may be a place for an outdoor amenity, like a garden or a storm. Sure. Oh, know, right. It's like stormwater, rainwater. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think there's a lot of potential there. For even geese, we can collect geese. No, we don't need any geese. There's enough spots for geese in this town. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Oh, yeah. I mean, and the other yeah. part of it, obviously, though, this one, though, there is a, you know, and we've got the right. building right there. Right. Oh, and then there's actually a building that's not in this drawing. Or you just make it. It's a garage. Or and just, a, or you just sort of take the ice arena and then fill it in. Right. Make it, fill it in. And make it your playing field replacement for what we're building. Right. Yeah, there's other right other opportunities. Or possibly a move that building. Yeah. Yeah. onto that space yeah. with a separate exit right? and making Shut the parking room into that because yeah. that is the main, right. your main hub for yeah. all things ground screw related yeah. on the school campus. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for going through that, Todd. And just for clarity on this diagram, what's outlined in the dash line is the wetland plus the buffer. And I kind of sketched oh, okay. in here and zoom here where oh, the okay. actual wetland is. Oh, okay. So, right. The, the wetland is not in the ice skating rink, but the buffer is. Oh, that makes oh, sense. Yeah. That makes they, sense. Because they're using a new potential rule of a hundred foot buffer than the twenty five that's that's still gonna pass for the existing. It still hasn't passed it, but it's still well the they're other planning thing is, for that too, yeah. rather than get a site that all of a sudden we don't meet our yeah. own requirements. Yeah. Plus those setbacks, whatever for buildings and structures, not kids running around on top Correct. of them necessarily. Yeah. So but I appreciate them planning for yeah. potential then all oh, yeah. We're we're searching for 
three acres because we've lost 300 feet all the way around. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Absolutely. So then the, the last point, last um, site, excuse me, that we looked at last time was uh, Black Point Park. Uh, we did not do a diagram here because this was kind of last in everybody's rankings. And so what we really wanted to do is pause here and just give everybody a chance to have a conversation around the site scoring, make sure that, you know, as it's as it kind of shook out in terms of your own individual scoring, if there's an opportunity where people want to have a discussion why you rank things the way you did, maybe there is some confusion about the categories that we can help clarify. We just want to make sure that we make some space for everybody to have time to talk. So, I mean, I'll just give some feedback when I was going through it. Like some of the categories kind of made sense, but we didn't know like special permits and approvals. Mm -hmm. I could have ranked them all a one because we don't know the wetland setback. I could have ranked them all a four because we own them and we don't have to go do something crazy. So I didn't really know exactly how to score that. I think most people yeah. felt the same way. I think they put it's, mostly the same number all the way. Like three, the three, 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 yeah. three, 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 yeah. so three, two, 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 two. Okay. Because again, I think that when you talk about where is it going to go and how much you're going to impact, that score will change once you get closer to selecting a site. So if I remember everybody's sheets when they turned them into me, everybody ranked pretty much all of those the same. Okay, so, so they could almost like excluded category for now. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it didn't affect the data. Uh, you know, and I thought something were just interesting too. The other thing would be like cost, land acquisition, ownership. We just, the other part for me was like, well, I don't know if we use the ice rink site. You know, we got to re replace your building. Well, uh, I have no idea if that's a hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand. You know, because yeah. you know just anything like that because it's so many contingencies. Well, that's not a hundred thousand. Yeah, right. Now. Just the use of site. Yeah, right I was gonna say there. right. You know I mean, well, and that's what that's where that one like like we own it because right. there was so they're all zero there, right. but there is some replacement there. Like same thing. Right. Memorial Field is awesome, right. but if we have to build a million dollar turf field somewhere else in town, right. well, that falls have, into this metrics. That, that was going to be my question on Memorial Field. How often is that used? Because I walk frequently on Memorial Park, but not during, during school. school time. I'm there during school during time. School. That field is used every day during the school year, religiously from three to six. Okay. Until winter. Right? And then winter. winter. Yeah, yeah. So, so right. really you're talking spring, you know, fall. And right. spring and fall for you know for the amount of months and so again all these if if one of these were to be a choice then Brett correct me if I'm wrong we would then have to take these rankings and then go back and look at what the options are from the impact and collect the relations and that's why I was you know not to go sideways here but when I was just doing my capital improvement plan with the town a couple of weeks ago I said I'm really stuck because I can't, if, if I don't know A and B's happening, I'm never going to get to C. Right. And so part of these are like in our master plan, it talked about right. renovating because they're starting to sink and twist and the middle school baseball and softball field. Well, the only way you, when you lose a field, the only way you gain fields is build it back, make it turf or add lights or two or more. Or all, you know what I mean? And so yeah. if it was, you know, so you would have to then figure that into your cost of, because as a playing field, you would then say, okay, how do we improve the middle school fields to meet the three hours a day use more? And so on campus um, or do some other configuration somewhere else. So at some point we're gonna have to start figuring that net impact the building. You know, one option is the building gets another 2,000 square feet and you, right. you build the parks building up, you know, as far as a shared resource, you get less right. cost, less overhead, you know, it's right. a shared resource type of thing, parking less, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's ways to kind of look at that. Um, Plus building up versus building out. We yeah, talked about, you know, as far as size, 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 so so all those. Um, how, big I, is, how big is the, sorry, I might be getting a little off track here. Okay. Um, how much use does the, the uh, smaller fields that are in the wooded, the ice rinks are so yeah. Well, this, that is the biggest challenge to that ice rink is, is Wentworth Field because that is the prime um, play area for uh, the school during the day. So that would be a, that would be something we'd have to figure out. That's where they have recessed it. So they have, so it's great to have the playground there across the street from the community center. Oh yeah. Right? But you do lose, that's, I mean, that's where the kids they're they're either on the courts yeah. or they're on the field uh, during recess. Gotcha. Right. That's what that's what worst playground is. Either in the chips on the accessories or they go to the field and play soccer or kickball. Uh, there's some give and take on all those, and there would have to be solutions. Like they that's what like that's where they have gym class outside is they go gotcha. on the field. 
So, so if you, right. So if we ended, I mean, if Memorial ended up being the location for this, you know, could you expand that field and, on the Wentworth side to be the replacement field? Well, I yes. was going to ask. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, one of the things that when they had mocked up in the master plan was taking that field and turning it sideways through right. the ice rink and making it a full size field. Yeah. yeah. So that's an option. Right next to the community center. Right. Yeah. How about moving the soccer field in the memorial field? Or is there too much of a, a, it, 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 a, a slope there? In Memorial Park, we kind of left it as a sanctuary. It's the okay. only space in town. There's never a sport on it. All of our parks. I can't. You don't want to. <laughs> We're not I'm, going there. I'm the politician here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but again, that's a challenge. So that's the, again, that's the, you know, with all the, everything that goes on there and people across that sidewalk. We put a soccer field there once because we were doing renovations in my seven years here. Yeah. And it was just a nightmare. We got more complaints. Oh, you did? Balls shooting in that field and coming uh -huh. across the walkway and and then, you know, full practice. So we, since that point, we, well, we found right. that. <laughs> Is it an option? Absolutely. Is there a soccer field where he's put that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a not, small one. It's, it's a, not, Why does it size? look like it's all trees? Yeah. Is that the old picture? Old it's an old picture. imagery. Oh, so it's, it's all clear. There. It's all clear. Yeah. Yeah. So there's also a garage right next to it. I that forgot. Arrow is. Yeah. Clear, there's yeah. Here, there's a shed there, <laughs> and then directly right behind it is a ball field. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So we has got that drawn, and then there's a little shed right where his triangle is. And then that goes on to what's the hockey rink, and then into the yes. the town. Other, not a shed, but more yeah, where people. the ice rink is, it could be mitigated into a play, small play area yeah. field for a recess for you know. There's way, you know, there's some. And for, I know we're you know, I'm, we're maybe digging into the weeds a little bit on this right now, but have you have you explored perhaps using the topography of the skate um, the skate park <laughs> down into that field as your you know ground level or sub level and kind of using that slope a little bit to fit a building into that space and allow more open space behind on the in the field portion. I mean, backing the building up to the skate park. Taking over the skate park, make it part of oh, the move the skate. We're talking about Memorial Park. Yeah. Well, we we, we have it. It's relocated. It's it's a move. You can relocate. You can relocate right. like that. Oh, I know. Oh, oh, yeah. But I'm just you. saying. Oh, okay. You can move this easier than this. <laughs> I, well, that's true. Okay. All right. Just step right up. Sorry, boss. I was going to say we haven't looked at taking over the skate park. We have thought about using that grade change there to create a separate entrance, and whether that would benefit the building or not. Uh, but one of the right. things that we'd like to have as an outcome from this conversation tonight is to pick one of these two sites so that we can do just a kind of first draft of a test fit of the building on the site. And then we can ab absolutely look at what is the impact of keeping the skate park? What is the impact of relocating it and so on uh, just to help inform the conversation a little bit more. I did grab this snip of the other aerial that we have that shows the field just so that uh, it's kind of clear where that how the existing field at Wentworth works. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Glenn or Liz, I'm sorry, I, I keep looking up at the big screen and not down at the little inch by inch here. I'm not a very good manager of meetings. Uh, any comments from you guys? I hate that. Gwen has her hand oh, Gwen, up. Go ahead, Gwen. Uh, my, uh, my comment is really just regarding um, Brett's last comment. Um, I would kind of like to know the cost impact of um, moving the the building at the ice rink um, versus any other costs associated with with making a new field somewhere else to compare these two sites mm -hmm. um, before actually saying, you know, telling telling you, Brett, which site is preferred. I mean, they're pretty close in their site matrix scores. Um, and I think both are equally um, or, or no one is not that much better than the other in terms of access to additional parking. I don't particularly think that the school parking is that far from the memorial field if we chose to um, use that site. So, so for me, parking is not um, so much of an issue. It's more the com trying to compare the cost of relocating the field versus the building. Mm -hmm. I agree with the parking. They both seem to have enough Monday to Friday day parking in front for what might be that audience and plenty of ample 
four, five, six o'clock schools out after hours parking, whether it be at Wentworth School or at the high school yeah. student lot. And on weekends, they can use all of it, right? right. Uh, you know, just above and beyond. Just remember, though, and again, I haven't put my own thought which one I prefer better, but that senior lot is further than at the Memorial Field. It's, it's up further there. than you think. Right. And it's uphill. It's up yeah, up. it is. So, uphill. so wait, senior lot's the newly paved one, right? It's the one up on the top left you there. You can see the right. corner. Yeah, right. yeah, the fresh pavement. That, like, yeah, 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 right, yeah. The lower high school. The lot. lower high the school. Lower high school. school. They, they call school. that the senior. That's a, sorry, student lot. Student, student lot. Student yeah. lot, not seniors. So it is, yeah, I get. I agree that it's uphill, but I would, I would be interested, Brad, if you could do um, a measurement from both sites to those parking lots because even at Wentworth you have to go all the way down and around the playground or through the gully <laughs> the the parking side itself and so in the end are they actually but you do have the somewhere. parking all along the track too yeah. there is a the right, but that's even a like yeah along the track right but it's that's a long skinny park but that's even a distance to get to right. so yeah. like proximity wise they may be somewhat yeah, similar. similar. Like yep. it, maybe it's 50 feet it's off or 75 yeah. feet. And it's, it's just not really a, a big deal. No, no. I mean, on a, on a weekend, most people park because no one's using it. They park in the loop. If you're not in the loop, though, it's a long walk, yeah, it's a long walk out and around yeah. because you have to go yeah. through the gully or right. you have to go around right. to <laughs> get around the field. Then you walk around your building. Yeah. Or through the wood chips. It, it actually is used for the business. Yeah. It's what's just the, not a field spot. What's the deal with all the land behind Wentworth? Uh, well, there's we own that the town owns it. Um, some of it is when you get further. There's a couple spots of wetland in there too. I don't. Yeah, that's why I was wondering. Yeah, but some of it's some of it's dry behind where the um, the modular is. That's now storage for the for the middle school, and then back. So okay. And the reason I ask about that because I also know that the school department's looking at well, they could expand Wentworth right. potentially. But what I where I was going with this was, can you put a field right yeah. there if you had to? Yeah. Although I hate to take down trees for a field, but that being said, yeah. it's cute. Know, I guess you have to look at adjacencies. I mean, I, I know Wentworth in the back. There's a fence there. You can walk there pretty quickly from that neighborhood. I have friends that live in that neighborhood. Oh, yeah, over you can there. Cut through, yeah. But if you get further and further, how much closer are those fields to the houses? Right. There's a pretty good buffer now between the existing soccer field and the neighborhood. Yeah. You but you see that that corner down there is that what the top of the red is? Yeah. I think you start putting that gets really close. You're right on a house. You're on a house and yeah. you know, Liz, I don't you, sorry. cut backs. Yeah. Liz, do you have any comments? We don't want to over the a baseball field or something right on top of it. Oh. No, I, I'm. I pretty much have the same questions you all have. Yeah, the other one's very good. Thank you. We add it. We knock the little blocks right into the house. This, I think adding the middle school is easy, but the what? You said they were thinking about adding on the one. Don't go sideways. Don't go sideways. I'm oh, not. I'm just the mid. The middle school is a mess. Don't right. ask. <laughs> With wetlands and Brett, so based on what you're hearing, what can you advise us to kind of work through this to kind of get closer to you for a, a so I mean I, I I hear everybody that it's hard to make decisions when you don't have dollar signs attached to them. And part of our process here is to select one of these, create the test fit, and then work with our cost estimators to understand uh -huh. what the overall capital cost impact is. As a part of that, we can absolutely look at what is the cost of replacing a field and what is the cost of incorporating a garage into the community center. Mm -hmm. We don't have to choose one or the other of these to do that on. Uh, we can just include that as part of our process with the cost estimator. And, and it sounds like that's something that we need to do to help evaluate either of these sites ultimately, right? right? So it's safe to say for everybody's comfort that we could select a propose first choice sites, let you do your work, which doesn't then, once we get those secondary costs field or building, um, then that may say change the factor to, for us to come back to you and say, okay, you know what? Uh, site two is a better selection. Memorial is better than ice rink or ice rink is better than Memorial. When you add those costs into to Gwen's point, there's still that opportunity. This is just that first pass to Get get the construction costs and the and the preliminary costs associated with it because that's the question I'm starting to get now from folks and I keep telling them I said you know we're in the site selection piece they'll start working on the construction costs until you know where it's going we don't know about stormwater or digging a ledge and 
that goes into that site build. So um, is, is that is that kind of a true statement? 100%. Todd, um, you know, like we always say, this is an iterative process. So we're going to, we can choose either one of these. You could leave it up to us and we can surprise you at the next meeting too, because the, the scoring on these was so close. Um, and the cost is going to be very similar uh, in terms of, you know, we are, we're a couple hundred feet away from each other here. So we could do either one of those. Can I ask a dumb question? I'm sorry. And I would like to hear whether this discussion has caused anybody who has graded this the way we all graded the three sites to feel uh, up or down on either of the two sites that we've been focusing on. Uh, my grades. I, I, I would say that I feel a little bit better about the ice ring site than I did when I graded it after this discussion, because what I'm being told by Brett's crew is that the building fits and I think there's a heck of a lot of junky, that's a junky area uh, on the municipal campus. Uh, no, it's not. Oh yeah, it's it's a mess. Uh, and so I could, so I would probably uh, give more credit to the ice rink site knowing that the building fits and its proximity is still terrific in terms of being on the campus being near all the schools. Uh, I have a dumb question. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. How come, one more. <laughs> how come you didn't look at the site where they were going to put the hockey rink? So we did. We did. Okay. It was, it was the, so Brett, what she's asking, oh, we did consider That's the what I get court. for not being We did meeting. consider the tennis court and the basketball court site. But too much wet yeah, yep. yes, Too much wet -wing. Okay. Shut that's up. was my guess. But... It's considerably changed in the last 10 plus yeah. years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. right over Thank here. Yeah. So sure. the one so the one thing I can't tell from the so obviously it looks like the ice rink is bigger, but you've kind of got that weird yeah. That includes that weird right spot. And it looks to be about 60,000 square feet bigger. But then when you look at the memorial park part, that the 156 includes the skate. I mean, on this. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard, you know, because the part of you says, well, there's a lot more space over here. Yeah. And if you take that part off, it's a ton more space, but is it really more space? Right. And that's what I can't tell. Like, yeah. you know, I don't want to, right. it's it's hard because, you know, Memorial, you think it's just, it's wide open, right? You go around the corner on the hill, you look out yeah. and it's a huge, vast, open, green, yeah. beautiful area with tennis courts and all that stuff tucked into it, which can also make it attractive, right? There could be a skate park and there could be tennis courts nearby. And it's, it's all kind of ties into it. Yeah community center in a way mm -hmm. but then you're going to have a big building in this space and the other one's like is woods i didn't i ranked mine myself and i didn't share my scores because i'm dead born if i yeah. had to choose and i'll tell you for two reasons one i like the idea of having a memorial park as the front entrance to be able to walk out but without seeing what a building would look like i'm also a little leery of seeing four sides of the building yeah. you know what i mean um, you can't hide it. It's just sitting in the middle of the field. You can't hide a side. You can't hide where your trash dumpster is. That oh, yeah, stuff goes. Right you know, just some of those city, what I would call city aspects that you yeah. see yeah. when you're in downtown Boston. So that's where I'm a little leery. And then some of the adjacent parking, to me, I think, is it feels a little farther away. The ice rink site, um, the Wentworth field is not a full size field. I think we have some other options on campus too do some upgrades on some other stuff to replace that play field. But I think what it when that and just Alex made me think about it when kind of that the ice rink and some of that space may be still enough space to make a play recess park for the Wentworth so they don't lose that, which would give you some adjacent. What personally what I like most about the ice rink site is when I was in Wiscasset, every kid in K through fourth grade got 16 swim lessons before they left elementary school. We oh, worked with right. the PE teachers. They all learned to swim. Because they all learned to swim, yeah. And, but it was always a busing challenge, getting them there. At least we know we could offer that type of program to every kid in Wentworth, and it's walkable. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, there's a lot, and it kind of splits the difference. So just that kind of triangle, Wentworth, middle school, high school, and then if, depending on what else happens with, with the school build, thinks about wherever they can add on to what the options are going to be. Um, 
that's why I think that one ticks a little more box for me. But again, it's also more usable. Like I'm not trying to centralize them. Like K to two kids don't get out of school and walk to the community center. Yeah, they're gonna get bussed. They're gonna get bussed, or they're gonna get picked up and driven over, and they're not gonna go on with their parents. Third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, we know they walk. Even Literally. fifth graders can walk to the library and go to the on library. their own now. So you could just walk over, have a group that gets yeah. walked from one to the other, and go to after school something. And that's that's just my take on with no no to like right. point again with no peripheral costs added to anything, just kind of functional. Oh, I wish we had Black Point on the campus somewhere. In the oh yeah, no, because it's so big. Yeah, it'd be a no brainer, but yeah. it's just not there. Yeah, I do like I do like the ice rink location. I'm a little concerned about your building and what it's going to take to move it to move that out yeah. of the equation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't cheap right now to do those. Mm -hmm. kind of things. No, it's definitely not. And that's why I think getting it site fit and then let the, their guys come back or, you know, their crew, I shouldn't say guys, their people come back and give us those alternate costs that would. That'd be helpful because yes. I don't think it's going to be as big a number as you think when compared to the total cost of the project yeah. period. And building yeah. the fields. Not even What's the back road and, there? Right. That's right. Building a field that's not cheap. Go up to the middle school. Where? I don't know. Yes. So I know the loop. They go in the loop. Yeah. Do they come out and go right and then drive down yeah. that road to the middle school? Yeah. This weren't worth this middle school. Right. But so, but this road right Are here. you talking in front? Oh, this. Yeah, that goes around. The road around. that cuts right Right yes. in the middle of that yellow line. Yes, it is goes that a around. Bus no, that is no. Yeah, that's the fire lane. That's fire, the fire lane. Okay. It's, okay. it's so got a case, gate on it. Gates on both sides. But you can walk on it. Okay. You can walk on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean it's definitely a pedestrian road, and it's okay. definitely. A, I, I think was Brett sure. said that the building fields isn't cheap either, so that it's the differential. Well, that's the piece. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I can tell you in the master in our master plan, and also in it'll be in future CIPs, that building needs a lot of love. And <laughs> we've we've done what we can in the inside, so it's already scheduled for some, you know, as far as some yeah. sort of piece. So, you know, yeah. yeah. But again, it, it all, every dollar adds up. So I did not. Right. I'm not pushing that off. So I think you want to hand up. Yeah. Will we have to do any construction to this road? And does anybody have any concerns about? maybe how much traffic is going to be on that road to access the fitness center with the kids potentially walking there. I mean, I, I know my uh, looks, you know, the road around Memorial field is, is pretty nice. Um, so I, I just don't know. If and you we, have a parking lot that close to the playground. Yeah. So how do you access? Yeah. So there's, there's definitely been conversations going on. And that's a great point. Um, we would definitely want to make sure wherever the site is, there is, you know, uh, improved sidewalks. We've got good sidewalks coming down the hill and those type of measures. Um, that road, when you're looking at the 211 on the ice rink site, and if you go straight above the F, um, where the basketball courts are right there. Thank you, Brett. Um, you know, that road is shut down. That's just, that's what um, uh, Dennis was asking about. That's the emergency fire lane. Yeah. Um, and there's already been conversation about pressure on campus and how do you move things around with the middle school and if we were dumping off the back of the emergency road. So I think that there's outside of this project, I think there's some other conversations happening in the background about how do you move traffic around campus. Now that more people yeah. are dropping their kids off versus busing them. So many. Yeah. It's a nightmare. It wasn't designed for that. No. The other thing I'd add is that. The road over by the ice skating First rink is narrower, you. and that's actually a benefit because uh, traffic is going to go slower. The road over by Memorial Field is wider. People treat that. I've driven on oh, that. Right. I've walked on that. People treat that like a highway it's on ramp right sometimes. Yeah. And so the, the relative safety oh. of having a narrower road, people slow down, and it's going to be a little bit safer than the way it's set up over at Memorial Field right now. Yeah. I could go with the ice. So we made a decision. Right. Do you have any other wisdom I before we start ice. arguing with each other? No, not arguing, debating slightly. Say that again, Todd. Sorry. Do you have that. any other words of wisdom before we start? Kind of give you a preliminary site to talk about. Know that we're not handcuffed to them, but. Yeah, I, I'll just kind of reiterate a couple of points that I heard being made, and I'm sorry, I can't always keep track of who's saying what in the room. 
But I think the proximity to Wentworth and the library of the ice skating rink site is really, really nice. The idea that kids could step out of school, could mm -hmm. choose to go to the library, and then could go to the community center or vice versa, that is really powerful. And doesn't it's a little less convenient over at Memorial Field than it is on the ice rink site. I also think the, the scale of this building that we're looking at, it's not small. We're talking about three gyms and a swimming pool, being able to tuck it a little bit more into the trees closer to the school instead of sitting out all on its own in the middle, middle of Memorial Field, like you said, Todd, with no place to hide the dumpsters. It, it takes a little pressure mm -hmm. off of the building and the size of it uh, when it's over in the ice skating rink and you can kind of conceal it more within the landscaping. Those are kind of my two cents, uh, just based on what I've heard that in the conversation tonight. Yes. I'd be interested in knowing where a building would be located in that ice rink area as far as the neighborhood well, that's that's adjacent. Had, can you flip it to the other slide you had, Brent? Because I think you find that later. Yeah, there. she had a mock of yeah. you okay. about the buffers where. Because that would be a concern. Yeah. So you can see that. But, and, but I think maybe that's a good reason to, to do a test fit on this site right. so we can really understand, you know, how close does it get to the edges to those property lines? Can oh, we conceal it and tuck it between the buffers? Looks like it dead ends. Well, yeah, I think that road is just like the end of the neighborhood, and then it takes a left and comes back down the other street. I don't think, well, I don't know if there's any houses on that little piece of road. There, right? there is. is. There? there are a couple. Of, I've been down there. Not on the wooded side. Oh, right, 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 right there. There's, there's houses right there. Yes, but not on this side. Side, of the, side of the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah where Brett is so pointing right across now. the street, the house yeah. across. I know, but I just know how people react to changes. <laughs> so I, I just want to read that's why I want to anywhere. I know, but I want to see you know just where. When's coming? Just she's she prefers Memorial, but is okay with the ice rink. If I read that correctly, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> A hard thing for me to visualize on the, that moral is easy. It's going to be a big building in the middle of the field that's there. It's just what worth that area. I would have never have guessed there was more space there than Memorial Park. Just my eyeball test. Oh, I know. But there really is. There is. No. And it's and it seems like you know because like we said, when you park there for a kids' soccer game, and you kind of go to walk around and go around the corners, and it seems like you're really cramming it in there, but it there's a lot of space right. more than, than it looks like from the outsider's view. There is, and again, not to beat this, but the ice rink area for, for better or worse has been piecemeal because of have tos. Yes. We need a shop. We have to have a field within the Wentworth school. We have to, the ice rink was here. And none, of, the it, garage none here. of it works together because it's always wet, right. you know, in the ice rink, because it drips off the back. We try to keep that and we put, you know, 100,000 gallons of water in the thing. And then, and the field and the kids are just so right. none of them were ever designed and then people walk across our shop we're always putting out cones because we're backing out right there's a there's a lot of things to look at but there's also things that i think potentially could be better in the long run and to make it all work better at least for my oh, part you know what i mean yeah. as far as well and i think that traffic just that whole traffic pattern of coming down the hill from the high school and that hard right then to get out you either have yeah, to go left around have... or you have to take that really weird right hand turn the bus into the up. skinny parking lot that's a horrible turn you know how many people drive in our driveway to drop the kids off because they think they're in Wentworth yeah, yeah right oh I know and they're always backing out they almost hit the cone on that choke point right across from me like it is weird you come down the hill and then when you get there you either have to go left all the way around Wentworth yeah. Yeah. or take the right into a weird parking lot with cars flying and so <laughs> so there might be a better overall way to position that and move the roads and, the and fix it, it right. and fix the traffic in this whole area which is just bottleneck and that yeah. little corner is a massive bottleneck liz you want to mute it yeah um you know initially i was really for memorial you know um but i'm with you guys i i think we have to almost rule out um the ice rink uh spot before we can really go to Memorial. I think besides the, the neighborhood that would be sort of near the building on uh, the ice rink um, lot, uh, you know, them having some say about whether they want a building back there. Uh, I think there be more residents that on its face won't want a massive building in that big field, um, Memorial field, you know? Um, 
And as long as we can manage the, the traffic and really get, you know, really concentrate on the traffic patterns and really be able to show the people who will just want to die a thousand deaths if there's going to be another building down there, um, which I don't blame them. You know, I, yeah. I feel like that's really the best place to start. Yeah, I'm leaning that way too, because I also think about, well, the neighborhood and there's going to be a lot of people going to the community center, but there's more people at the soccer field that would ever be outside that building playing or the kids are going to be in the parking, you know, they're going to be in the across the street in the playground. They're not going to be like, I'm thinking there's not going to be hundreds of kids just milling about outside the building right. in that space, unless they're in a spot that they already would be in. But so, people don't want to build them there. Maybe. Just, that, but but I don't even saying, see it though. I mean, I know, but that's why I want to see how would it be yeah. placed? What would it yeah. look like? So in the, in the essence of time and knowing Gwen may all of a sudden get the stomach bug because <laughs> starting at seven. And this is the one thing that, that you tell to keep them in, in yeah. the timeline is looking for. What I'm hearing is I think that somebody could make a motion to consider the site of their, you know, preliminary site, knowing that it's a test fit site. Yeah. It's the first run test it. And I think Liz put it nicely that we need to test fit it to eliminate it. Yep. I say agree. it doesn't work because it seems to fit and check the most boxes. Yeah. Eliminate it with the test fit. And then that's a different conversation if you want to fall back into a memorial of that. If that is what you were kind of saying, yeah, I agree. I agree. It might be more work to figure out all those other pieces with traffic congestion and things, but it also makes solve more problems. Memorial is just—it's a big open space. You got to put a building on it, and then it's worth about right. parking and flow. But this might, again, it might be a little bit more work with all the moving parts, but it might end up being right. a huge fix of a lot of problems we have on campus. Yeah. So I, I, I'm on board with that. Let them eliminate for us if it can't work. No, I agree. So to be a motion, is that is that the process? I think, yeah, I think that we just need a, a motion to. So I'm not voting them. I, I I would make a motion that we have util test fit the ice cream site. We're in second for that. We're in second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Any discussion? We discussed it. We've had it there. Then All in favor? It. Do that for oh, thank you guys very much. So Brett, that gets great. you the direction you needed there. That did. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for that conversation. Yeah. It's always great to hear you talk about it so we can get a little more background on, on the thinking. Yeah. All right. So we'll try to get everybody out early so we can um, enjoy the tournament that's starting. Uh, we wanted to just really briefly uh, touch on the open house that's coming up on April 24th. And maybe, Todd, before I talk about kind of the, the stations that we're, we have in mind, I don't know if you want to fill in any of the details that you know so far. Yeah, so um, chatted with Patrick briefly because we had another date that got jammed up with uh, budget meetings on the 12th. And so we couldn't find another school event to try or community service event to piggyback up. So we had a large population. So um, went back to Keith here and he picked a couple of dates that Brett, um, Keith and Darren could make it here. In person to be able to help with the open house so that we have all three kind of entities um to help with that event and so this was the one date that uh the wentworth cafeteria is available yeah. from three to seven so that way you could have the whole team our group could come in and as they want to or are allowed to but it'll allow parents to pick up their kids from school Oh, go okay. have their piece. It's it's lighter now, so so seniors or people that don't like to drive at night can come during the day, huh. or at six o'clock. So it's still light out. Um, but then that seven o'clock still allows for um, somebody that's getting on a work late to have the opportunity to come. So that time frame seemed to check a lot of the boxes, especially giving trying to make it convenient for folks to come and and, and give their say. Uh, the other part about this was then we would still meet on our regularly scheduled meeting on the 25th, which is the next day to review that it's already on your schedule, to review the data and findings. That way they can continue down their path. Um, because the goal um, would for, and I think I got the date right, Brett, but May 13th is our next meeting. And that gives them just over, um, just gives just under a month to finish all the, uh, they can get us better construction numbers. Then you'll have all three pieces 
construction, operating, and revenue. And then that, because you, you don't want to do that piece until you have the public input, because they may say, why are we building three? Let's do two. And, you know, but then when you put all three pieces together, the operation and the revenue, those things, again, we've talked about, they're not, they don't slide equally on the scale. And so that would give you an opportunity on the 25th of April to review that data, give them the three and a half weeks. And then in your May meeting is really where you find the true construction costs and where that market is looking like. Um, and by then you would have test fit the site to have that conversation regarding some of those other amenities. So I think it, it works still in your timeline, Brett, but checks all the boxes for community input, but then review by this group and their real work may start depending on that feedback and when you start talking about sliding scale and stuff. So the open house would happen. Just so we had one earlier. Didn't have a ton of people yeah. there, but what will be different from this one from that one? Like I guess that's the yeah. So that's what Brett's gonna go over now. Okay. He just wanted me to give um just kind of a time. Okay. Yeah. Because that's what I want to find out is yeah. kind of like what right. So we want to do what he did. Right. So what's that yeah, one? No. Yeah. So, I, I mean as long as he can make that, yeah. they can make that time alone. So yeah. makes sense. Oh you Brett. Yeah. So Thanks, Todd, and thanks for putting it in that context. So what we're proposing at the open house right now is to have a couple of different stations set up. Uh, we want to have a project timeline that looks not just at the timeline of our study, but the overall timeline of how this building uh, might come into fruition, both in terms of the study, but then future design, future community engagement on that design and ultimately construction timeline and when it might open. Not to put specific dates on that, but to so people understand how long each step takes. You know, we're really, really early in this process. This is just a study so far. There's a lot more work that needs to happen later on, a lot more touch points for the community to engage in the process. We wanna make sure that that's really clear right off from the get-go. Then we're imagining that we're gonna have a, a table set up with some boards that talks about all of the, the building program and have all of those space sheets, the room sheets that we've developed over the last couple of months with everybody. So people, if they really want to get into the details of what we're, we've been talking about having in this building, that'll be their opportunity to get into the details with one of us. We'll have another station set up with Darren from Ballard King to talk about the operational analysis uh, and some of the that anticipated membership that we've been talking about the last couple of meetings because it's important for people to understand how this building can be sustainable and how the uh, the revenue model works. So we want to make sure that if people have questions, they can get those answers there. And then we'll have another uh, station set up to talk about some of these sites, not just uh, the sites that we've been talking about tonight, the ice rink and memorial field, but all the other ones that we've looked at as well, just so that we can get the opportunity for feedback from a larger group of people. And then our last one that we anticipate having, and this one is going to be a little bit self-guided, but we'll have some boards that have uh, kind of look and feel pictures of community spaces so that people can put dots, they can put post-it notes, they can make comments about the type of space, the feeling that they're getting, the atmosphere, the architectural design, just to help kind of inform uh, and spark the imagination of people who are participating in it. So, so that's what's different than the first one. The first one's kind of gathering stuff. This is showcasing the collection of the data that's been done for years and the surveys and then uh, feedback we got from the kind of programming spaces. This puts it in perspective of people actually seeing how they could use it or what it means to them. And then um, ultimately they'll have to decide, is it value to them? You know what I mean? And so that's where we're still in that initial process. Brett, the comment that I think is super important for people to understand and um, I don't know if I'll be able to repeat it the same way you did, but I love your comment or um, about the timeline moving forward because whether this hits a ballot this year, next year, whenever it hits, people need to understand what it takes to put a building together, right? This is the feasibility piece. Then once you get approved, you've got a design phase and then you've got a bid phase. So it's not like you say yes, and the building gets built in six weeks. You know, right. there's all these pieces to putting a whole building together. So the more we can educate people on that, have a clear understanding. Um, the only thing that I was thinking about, Brett, and it just it was kind of feedback in my head from the comments we had tonight, and, and I can help you with this. Um, 
depending on the, you know, let's just say, again, let's just say it's the ice rink site that we're talking about is the really the test fit piece. I, I would want to make sure we have some other um, materials to discuss what the potential offsets are, some of the offsetting, the shop, the ice rink, the play field. Like the goal for me when, we, when I do any of these public engagement things is to have information when people kind of, can we foresee the questions that are going to get asked? And can we have educated answers with options? We're not making choices for them, but we're saying this could happen, this could happen. So they know that we've considered it and it still ranks or it's still value. And then here is the cost associated to do that. Cause ultimately it's going to come back to people feel like they could support it. Right. Right. And, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. I think in our job and on my mind, it is ultimately, will they support it? But for me, it's still about if we were lucky enough to ever get this, how does it operate and how is it the most right. self-sustaining could not be a burden annually? Right. So right. those things are important for people to understand. So I like the way you've laid out those, those pieces and I like the self-guided piece. And again, that's where committee members could be there as well to kind of have conversation and answer questions and, what were we thinking or why did this? I think that that's a very valuable, strong kind of uh, thing. And this will give us plenty of time to advertise, push out there. And again, people want to see something. You know, yeah. If they want to see, they want numbers, they want, I think we've got enough data with the work you guys are going to do over the next, you know, four weeks, it's going to pull the conversation into more of a, a, a real picture, both financially and operationally. For people then to make true comments about, yeah. but it's something we have to make very people know. This is a step in the process. We're not selling it to voters yet. We're not even close to that. Yeah, this is still a time to come learn more and give feedback. Oh, there's and so much. There's this so much more to do. But you know, I'm halfway through our process. Oh no, yeah. No, I know. And that's, but that, that's, that's what we'll know. Like this is another piece to come in, see what progress we've made. We've been yeah. doing all this work. We've been having consultants, and you know, we've been doing this work. Where I think some that's a really big part because. Unless you're really paying attention to it, like we saw, like with the school project, you just people don't know that's how you know. Right. It kind of like all of a sudden, here it is. Right. This is what we're voting on. Right. Well, no, there's been years of whatever in the background. Yeah. So I think this is really important, and then really drive to like, hey, if you want to come here, what's going on? Get down here. Right. We could use it. Gwen's had her hand up off and on. Go ahead, Gwen. <laughs> wave that thing. Don't be shy. <laughs> you're like you're like a, on a two by two square. So yeah. shake it. Wave it up there. You're muted. Oh, you're muted, muted yourself. Muted. You're muted now. Sorry, I was going to make two um, two comments, and I'm not sure it, what the timing is um, for them, but related to the last point, um, I'd be interested in, and, and I don't know if it, it would be now or, or perhaps later when we're trying to sell this idea, um, but a, a, a um, station where the stakeholders who are going to use the facility can be there to say why, tell the community, whoever's participating in this event, why they need it, such as the swim team. Didn't our swim team just win the state championship? Yes. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and I think, you know, to win, to win it and not be, um, not even have a pool in our community, um, that's pretty extraordinary. And, and uh, they deserve a pool as far as I'm concerned. Um, but also, um, I think the biggest questions we're going to get are about um, property taxes. And is there some way we can incorporate um, information from the town councilors uh, about any, you know, so because they're going to get the, the questions like, how are you going to make sure that um, right. our taxes don't go up, um, you know, unreasonably or, or whatever. So. Um, can we figure out a way to have a station to answer those questions somehow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can chat with the town manager and kind of strategize that. And, and, and Jean can chime in too. Right. One thing I want to be careful of, and, and, and I think this happened in the school, was a number got out there yes. and people didn't understand what it was. Right. And so everybody started forming a narrative. And so I want to make sure that we don't know what a tax impact is, and it's really hard to say that because, um, and I'm not the sharpest, you know, knife in the drawer, but, you know, timing, what's coming off the existing tax, right. rate, what, you know, going through a rebound, all those things are factors. And whether you know that bond's going to be pulled in FY27 right. or 26 or half right. now because you've got a calendar year or, you know, it's really hard to. Um, 
So let me let me let me chat with Tom because he's pretty good at strategizing that stuff. I think we dove into this really. I think it was in our first meeting. We almost went down a rabbit hole way too prematurely, but there was a lot of discussion about depending on where it is and tip funds and all those things that are definitely way above my complete understanding. And so I think there's a lot of opportunity to offset some of this bill cost. Forget we talked about naming rights and sponsorships and all those sort of things. And so until we design a facility that we feel and get community right. support that this is the facility people want to consider. Right. That's the key word, consider. Right. Then we can give them all the data to see if it's value. I just want to be really sure that we're not putting some fake number out there. Right. Low or high. Right. No matter what camp you're in. Right. I don't want to have a, a, right. a misnarrative. No number. You know what I mean? But Because I think we're going, I, I've liked the process. I've heard from a lot of people that follow and watch that they like learning, they like understanding, they're figuring out eventually, and then they'll said, I'll decide if I can, if that $400 a year for a senior to go is worth it to me, or right. depending on what's in the building, but we're not there yet to put value to right. it. So um, I just want to be cautious of that. But let me chat with him, Glenn, because there may be some a place to answer some of those big picture, if you will, topics about alternate funding or, or how it impacts. And so I can uh, ha definitely have that conversation report back to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, is that? Do we have a meeting before this, or is this our last? This is our last before that. Yeah, and, that, and then we meet the next day. We meet the next. Okay. Day. Okay. So, Brett, do you need anything else before we go to public comment and? No, we're, this conversation has been fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking forward to the open house and then the meeting the next night to to fill you all in. To the extent that all of you are available to come for some or all of that open house, that would be great just to circulate with whoever shows up and, and be able to answer questions and inform people about the timeline. I think that's the most important thing to hammer home for everybody is that we're in the very, very early stages uh, of a process that, that takes some time. And as much as we wanted to uh, fulfill the need that's there, there's a lot of intentional steps we have to take to understand the cost, the location and all of that. Um, and that's gonna be important to, to drive home for everybody who shows up. Brett, I'll reach out to you and Keith next week. I, I'm not working tomorrow, I gotta go to a funeral, but I'll reach out next week so we can talk about those, the steps that you talked about we still have to go through because when I'm, you just kind of brainstorming my head. Once we start doing some marketing about the open house, I'd like to be able to put some of those other opportunities out there too. Not with a date, obviously, but you know, next step, next step. So we can, the more we can put it out there, people can know that they have ample time in the next middle phase of this process. So, so what was the timing of the open house? Yeah, three to seven. Three to seven. Yeah, I told you my calendar. School picked up, come right over. So. All right, so next on the agenda item is public comments. And I think it's just, um, we have one guest online and two in person. Any comments or mm -hmm. at the moment? Just taking it all in. I understand, glad to hear. I, I think you're being a little optimistic uh, and not expecting questions from the public about the cost. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, uh, I think the longer that you go delay um, putting even a range of about forty two to magnitude of mm -hmm. the cost out there, you're you're just you're digging a hole of public confidence by I mean, you, you've got the well you know, you've got the operating stuff nailed down pretty much um, to to not convert and. and I have a pretty good idea of what the building looks like. Yeah. I, I understand there are things that aren't clear still, including land, land costs. You went somewhere other than these sites, yeah. um, site development, all that kind of stuff. Um, but but you, you, you have to have, on a, you know, a gross square footage basis, cost per square foot, you know, it's between 40 and 50 million bucks. It has to be. Um, so why not why not express that to the public now? Why leave them making up their own numbers? That, that'd be really good. 
No, good comment. Thank you. Jeremy Gates. Um, I think that's my hand on there. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I confused myself. Um, Debbie, anything before or before I close? Public comment? There's something in the chat, too. That's, that's um, oh, okay. Sorry. That's, um, yeah, I'm just playing. Yeah, no, I'm trying to follow and look down. So, all right. So, our next agenda items again, we've got the open house. We'll get that stuff out. And then, really, the next agenda item, uh, and I'll look back with Patrick when he gets back in town, is um, for that meeting on the 25th, is reviewing what we've learned from the 24th. Mm -hmm. So, um, I will take a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Then a second. No, sir. Gwen, has Kentucky gone ahead yet? I was just looking at my March Madness. All in favor? And they were behind. <laughs> They just went ahead by two points. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> They're not playing very well. <laughs> no, I know. I was surprised. That's what it is. That's right. That's uh, 8.08. Oh, I'm going to stop recording, so I'm so bad at this. Uh, I don't know what to tell you because I'm really bad. Oh, and meeting. Well, and meeting.